heute miteinander hier im Comiczentrum auf der Buchmesse in Frankfurt. Ähm, ihr wisst sicher alle nicht, warum ihr da seid, deswegen haben wir mal so ein bisschen was da oben eingeblendet. Hier auf der Bühne geht es demnächst los mit einem Bühnengespräch, einem Zeichenkurs mit zwei ganz großen Künstlern der Comic-Szene. Zum einen mit Sergio Aragones, bekannt aus Mad und jüngst auch aus den Simpsons und mit Bill Morrison. Hier in Deutschland muss der, glaube ich, mittlerweile niemand mehr vorgestellt werden. Und ähm, vielleicht kurz zum Ablauf, wir werden hier ein kurzes Bühnengespräch machen, dann werden wir ein bisschen äh, Action machen und danach geht es dann in eine Signierstunde über. Und jetzt erstmal herzlichen Applaus für unsere beiden Künstler, die sich hier den Weg bahnen. So, 
I was told from many artists who draw The Simpsons it is the most difficult thing because The Simpsons always have to look the absolute same. So what are the rules to uh, draw The Simpsons? Well, yeah, it, it depends on... Uh, the rules are flexible. Uh, when we do the Trias of War, the, the uh, Bart Simpson Horror Show issue, it's... Um, we, we like to allow the artists to do their own styles with only just a couple of rules. And those rules are that the characters must have the overbite and they must have the bulgy eyeballs. And just you know, generally be recognizable as the character that they're supposed to be. Um, with the normal Simpsons comic, we like to keep it looking as much like the TV show as possible. Um, so there are more rules involved when we do that. Um, uh, over the years we've sort of opened it up and when we have an artist like Sergio who has his own distinct style um, we want we don't want Sergio to try to disguise his style when he's drawing The Simpsons so Sergio uh, I mean if you look at the Sergio page up there on the left um, every, everybody is recognizable they're obviously the Simpsons characters but they're also obviously drawn by Sergio. So it's, it's a, like a perfect hybrid of the two styles mixed together. Um, so are you asking like when we have a, a, a celebrity drawing The Simpsons or when we have a, a normal General Simpsons artist? My, my question was regarding the, uh, well, the regular Simpsons stuff who draws The Simpsons. They have to uh, stuck to the rules, uh, I think. Correct. And this book that we produced is a, a good example of the uh, hundreds and thousands of rules that we have <laughs> for how to draw the Simpsons. Um, and these rules were created mainly by the people who do the TV show, the animators, because there are so many different, and this is true of any animated TV show or, or movie, because there are so many different artists who have to draw the characters they don't want the characters looking different from scene to scene. Um, so all the artists have to follow the rules so that it, it uh, you know, creates sort of a seamless look. So, um, yeah, this, this book is full of uh, just step-by-step -step guidelines for any artist so that they can follow these rules and then draw The Simpsons the way they're supposed to look. So, we will later on this, on this white paper show a little bit of how you build a Simpsons figure uh, with these rules in this book. Uh, my question goes to Sergio. Sergio, have you ever stuck to the rules of this book when you started with <laughs> The Simpsons? Basically, they have to look like the characters. But the difference is that they have to have very strong rules for the television because every artist has to match what the other artists do. You cannot have one artist drawing a guy with a big head and then the, the other artist with a little head. It's just absurd. But when you're drawing comics, there's more action, there's a different feeling that you have to give for the movement. Yeah, it's more organic. More organic. So it, have a more freedom. They elevate a little, but they have to look like the characters. They have to have the same proportion. That's very important that the heights are the same, that the relation with all the characters are the same. You cannot draw one your way and the other a different way. No. So then you have a carte blanche from the editors to do the rest of the other characters on our style. So I can draw the elephants my way, or the, the only thing that we have and I do is because the house and the school and the bar, most the bar and everything is already established. So I have to follow those rules of the background. So, because they exist, it's like somebody's home, you cannot change that. With the characters and the feeling, you can give a different movement. So, what it takes a long time is to have research for the backgrounds. 
when you join the house, I says, wait a minute, there's supposed to be a door there. So I have to go through all the material that they have to send me to see if, where that door goes so they can go to that place. But that's yeah, but, but also when we have somebody like Sergio drawing The Simpsons, we don't want him to... Uh, we want to respect Sergio's fans, and we want them to, when they see Sergio drawing The Simpsons, they, they don't want it to look like somebody else drawing The Simpsons. It should look like how Sergio would draw The Simpsons. And so, so I think it's important when we have an artist who has a, a following, that their style comes through and isn't isn't sort of um, disguised by the look of the characters. But it's always very important to maintain the television look yeah. on, on the regular. And, and I think you, you do a really beautiful job of of straddling the, the line between the look of the TV show and, and Sergio's look. It's like a perfect hybrid. I want more money. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at this point, um, I know, uh, Sergio, you have been one of the biggest Simpsons fans since the series started. Absolutely. Before they asked me to work, I have been a Simpsons fan before everything. I have every piece of merchandise yeah, you that he has to I, I have spies in Germany, in Australia, in France, that they tell me what new product come out. So I buy it, so I have everything. Also, ich habe ich hab, ich hab sein Haus gesehen. Das ist wirklich also eine Simpsons-Sammlung, die hat wahrscheinlich, glaube ich, sonst niemand. He is definitely the biggest fan ever. So, uh, and I know um, you always have been one of the biggest uh, Sergio fans all the time. So, yes. um, what of the Sergio art before the Simpsons was your favorite? Uh, well, I grew up reading Mad Magazine, so I discovered Sergio through the little margin drawings. Um, that's why I have to wear glasses today, because my eyes are so bad from looking at those little tiny drawings. Uh, but I love everything Sergio does, but I would say my favorite are uh, not only the marginal drawings, but also his mad look at whatever. I remember, I'm a huge uh, fan of Batman. And I remember having the issue in the 60s that did a mad look at Batman and, and Sergio's uh, cartoon of Batman flushing his cape down the toilet. It's one of my favorites. <laughs> so, uh, by the way, if you have a question, just raise your hand and, um, you know, feel free. Yeah, er lädt ein zu den Fragen. Wir machen das aber ein bisschen am Ende, sonst kommen wir hier so ein bisschen in Teufelsküche. When uh, Bill asked you to draw The Simpsons. What was your first reaction? Yes, <laughs> immediately. Yes, absolutely. And then when, when I came home, I said, "What have I done? And now I have to draw all that exactly. I have to learn how to draw again. And that book is my Bible because you refer to it, so you can do it your own style. But you have to refer to it constantly for sizes." ways that they are, because I have also a very bad memory, so I have to go back immediately for little details, the shoes, the, the name of Barney, everything has a specific. Sergio asked me to draw Gru, and I said no. <laughs> Gru is uh, one of uh, Sergio's uh, uh, persönlichen Erfindungen, the uh, Baba Gru, and uh, yeah, the Bill said that he can't zeichnen. Well, um, Bill, when you have seen the first uh, sketches of the first story, the, the Megascript story from Sergio, so what did you think about it? Well, actually, uh, the first story that Sergio did was a, a few years ago in the Trias of Horror. Exactly, yeah. He, he did a, uh, uh, you know, we, we invited him as one of the artists to come in and do his version of The Simpsons in a horror story. So that was the first time I saw you do The Simpsons, and uh, it was incredible. I mean, I just remember looking at all the detail in the backgrounds, all the little sight gags, little characters that he put in, and I love, I love just seeing his style um, sort of superimposed over the style of The Simpsons. It was, it was uh, to me, it was 
um, it's, it's sort of like a, a perfect comic version of what The Simpsons should look like. A comic version of The Simpsons? Yeah, I mean, I mean comic book version. <laughs> yeah. So, it would be uh, like a comic The Simpsons would read in the comic. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and the reason I say that is because, like Sergio was saying earlier, um, when you have an animated TV show, you automatically have all the, the motion, the movement. Um, you know, it's already the inherent in the animation. But in a comic book page, everything is static and not moving. So the artist has to bring his own energy um, to create the illusion of movement in these, you know, non-moving pictures. And the way Sergio draws not only The Simpsons, but anything, it, it has that illusion of movement that isn't physically there, but it makes you think it's moving. Shortly? Yes. <laughs> no, yes. Well, first I want to know from Bill because uh, for some weird reason you are now the boss of Sergio. So uh, isn't that, isn't it uh, that you're, well, don't you have to criticize him as, a, as the boss? Uh, not really. Every, 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 so far everything that Sergio has come to me, you know, story ideas, because he's also the writer of his stories as well as the artist. Um, Every idea that he's ever pitched to me has been perfect. Um, and there was one story that he's working on now that just had a slight problem because the original story idea was with Mark and Milhouse. And it was a, it's a story involving Michael Jackson. And because of the uh, timing, and because Michael Jackson passed away, it didn't quite work. And I said, well, why don't we make it Homer and Barney as children? So Homer and Barney as 10-year-olds, the same age as Bart and Millhouse. And once, once we uh, hit on that, it was perfect. You know, the story worked perfectly. So I think that's the only time I've ever really had a, a change in anything, that, any ideas that you've had. And as far as artwork, I've never, I've never had any criticism of the artwork. Well, so let's do some drawing. Sergio, what, what do we want to show? <laughs> We were talking about the, the, the speed on the camera. Well, there's so many frames they can give the speed. But when you're doing a comic, if, if you want to have the, any of the characters, let's say Bart running, then you'll have to exaggerate it, you know, and, and then sort of like.
You know you can go the mouth completely out of, out of frame, which you couldn't do in the television. Yeah. Because if you do those eyes on the regular base, you'll have to go the perfect eyes and then this is what it showed. I think another thing that uh, Sergio really brings to a comic book page is the line quality too. Because on, on animation, you have a very, what we call a deadline or a flat line. It's all, the line is all one weight. Um, but when Sergio uses his pen and does the inking, you get a real character to the line that adds a life to the drawing that you don't get on television. Well, let's go. go um, let's go one step back. Bill, would you please uh, show uh, at one or two characters how um, the the regular uh, rules for drawing the Simpsons characters, like they are in the book here, um, like like you would take them to make a character. Um, well, one thing, when, when you see me doing a signing and I'm doing little drawings on the comic book covers, I had to teach myself to draw the characters without sketching. So normally when, when we're drawing the characters for the comics or for animation, um, we, we construct the characters out of geometric shapes and everything is... So... Uh, I'll start with Bart, and uh, basically, if I start drawing Bart, I start with a, uh, a cylinder, or a, sort of like a, a can, a tin can sort of shape. Also, vielleicht diesmal ganz kurz eingesetzt für diejenigen, die es nicht mitbekommen. Uh, Bart beginnt eigentlich mit einer Dose, wenn man es genau nimmt. Zumindest der Form einer Dose. And I'm, I'm always thinking in three dimensions. I'm thinking of this as a, like a three-dimensional form. And, uh, you know, there are basic rules about the construction of his head, the construction of his body. It's all based on these geometric shapes. And one of the reasons why there are so many rules for the animators on how to draw the characters is because the geometry of the design is very precise and it has to be consistent no matter which artist is drawing. All the, the size relationships have to be the same. Uh, you know, all the, the, for example, Bart has nine points of hair across the top of his head. Now when Sergio draws Bart in the comics, it doesn't matter if he has 10 points of hair, some panels he might have seven or eight, um, but in animation, if Bart doesn't have nine points of hair in every drawing, then what happens when it's animated is his hair starts to flutter. And maybe sometimes you want that effect if the wind's blowing. You want that fluttery look, but normally you want his hair to stay the same. So we have to uh, be very precise about how many points of hair. I think that's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, eight. Yes, nine. So once we have the basic shape, then we just start adding details. The ear is situated, basically if you drew an imaginary line between the middle of the ear and the bottom of the nose. See, we have all these really annoying little rules like that. you do all your sketching and you have a, a drawing that you're pretty happy with it's still very messy but um, relatively relatively accurate um, you know then we go in and just find the lines that are the most correct and then ink over those really bad to say Like perfect circle. It's 
actually not quite perfect. It's a little bit off -all. In fact, one of Mac Grading's pet peeves is sometimes artists will use a, a plastic template to draw the eyes and they'll make it a perfect circle and he hates that. He wants it to be more organic. So it has to be almost round, but not quite. And the teeth sort of fan out. The lines aren't perfectly up and down. They sort of, uh, they fan out like in a cone shape. That's horrible. <laughs> if an artist drew this, I would reject it. <laughs> but anyway, that gives you the idea. So, um, so you can see the geometry involved here. Now when I'm drawing Homer, Homer's head is not based on a cylinder, but it, it's more based on a sphere. So when I'm drawing I'm Homer, learning, no. <laughs> I start I start with a sphere. It's going to ruin your style. And then I establish where his eye goes, like right at the bottom of this sphere in the center. And I add the other eye behind it, so it's slightly peeking out, uh, slightly behind it, the other the first eye nose in there. Once I have the nose, I know where the ear goes. And then his upper lip is like a big half a sphere. And then his lower lip and chin is like a smaller half a sphere. in the details like the hair. And there are actually lots of rules that I'm sort of skipping over here about the placement of the hair, and, uh, the shape and the size and everything like that. But just for the sake of uh, not boring you to death. So then once, once again, once I have the basic sketch, then I can start making all... Now, one of the things I do also in this process is I do correcting. So, sometimes as I'm making, I'll notice if my drawing is off slightly, I'll, I'll make little changes. So basically, uh, you can see the two different approaches as far as the shapes go, uh, and every character is different. Um, a lot of the secondary characters, like Mo, the, the uh, design is much more organic. It's not as much based on geometry, but uh, every every character has its own little rules and different uh, sensibilities. You know, since we brought out this book, uh, we got from the readers a lot of. Uh, art, readers art, and it, it's growing better and better. So this really works as a kind of a how to draw the Simpsons. Well, uh, Sergio, would you please add a barb head and a homo back head just to see a little bit of the differences, how it looks like if you draw it.
So, um, <laughs> um, Bill, yes. You want me to critique? <laughs> See, I, this is a great example, actually. Um, now you can see here, as, as almost perfect as these drawings are, they're not quite perfect, but they're, you know, they're designed, they're, they're drawn, sticking to the rules of how the characters are drawn. And they're very nice and attractive, but not really very funny. But you look at Sergio's drawings, they're not as correct, they're, they don't follow the rules as much. But you can still tell this is Bart, this is Homer, and the drawings are, I mean, you saw the reaction, the drawings are, you know, hilarious. Everybody, everybody's delighted by this, not so much by this. Well, no, no, I mean, but this is, but this is correctly how the characters are drawn, but with not, without the humor. Also, don't forget that on my style, if I, if I had to draw a person, I, I, let's say a, a normal, person, it will look, let's say, like, like this. You know, if I had to draw it for The Simpsons, then I would have to change completely so it matches the style of The Simpsons. So I'm going to go like this, then I got to go like this, then I got to go like this, then I got to go like this. And then what it changes is this. <laughs> that makes it a Simpsons character just by changing that, that jaw. But still is what I draw. My problem is that all my characters when I'm drawing, uh, like Gru or, or Alfred and everything, they have five fingers. So this, these characters, all of them have one, one two, three. Yeah. So I spend more time counting fingers. <laughs> so, so I don't put too many fingers on the Simpsons. And sometimes I forget because I'm drawing and I'm putting them. I have to use my white out to start winding off fingers. <laughs> because I spend more time doing it. You know, I used to work in the merchandise department. So I did drawings for all the toys and everything. And when we started marketing the Simpsons in Japan, we had to redraw the characters with five fingers because they, they wouldn't accept the four-finger characters in Japan. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's... that's <laughs> so that, that, what, that would be the, the big difference, but when I draw a Simpsons house, he draws it exactly the same way because we cannot change that. The car, same thing, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I tend to put a little more stuff in it, so it looks, you can spend more time looking at the drawing. There's no more, uh, no more differences. Yeah. The, the girls, uh, when they draw March, so, so like, draw, draw the bottom part of March. The bottom part? Yeah. The skirt and the legs. Right. That, that, that will be March. Part, part of March, like the first week of March. Does not really look like the Playboy version, as well. No, she's a little bit crappy. I have a hard time drawing like this. Yeah, he had to be, but for, when, I'm, when I'm drawing March, what I do is I make it shorter, you know? I make the legs a little longer. Mm -hmm. I've been meaning to talk to you about that. Oh. <laughs> Oops. I feel more comfortable. Every time I see March with a long skirt, I say, March, you have a very beautiful body, and I just raise it up a little. She's a very beautiful woman. Oh, yeah. You should see her in a nightgown. In Playboy, she appeared in Playboy. Oh, yeah. Um, Sergio, you are known as one of the fastest, if not the fastest, alive uh, cartoonists in the world. Uh, how long does it take you to draw a Simpsons page? <laughs> if you use the research and, and you look at, at the whole thing that you have to do, it takes exactly the same amount of time that a normal people. This being fast, somebody once said that it, because I draw fast when we do things like this to entertain, 
But I cannot draw like that when I'm doing it on paper because it's totally, completely different. This is a gross exaggeration. So they say they see you drawing here. Says, oh, he's the fastest. Well, for this, yes, because we have to entertain. But when I'm sitting drawing, I, I go like normal people. I'm not that fast. One of the uh, stories that Sergio did, I think, for Bart Simpson number 50, which was the first full issue that Sergio drew. Uh, he had a story where Bart and Nohaus build a rocket ship and they start out just building it out of junk from the junkyard and then Professor Frank comes along and he starts giving them actual parts of rockets to, to put onto the ship and Sergio showed me all the, the reference I mean he researched like real uh, rocket parts and they, they were all perfectly detailed when he draws a helicopter it's a perfectly, I mean, it, it's drawn in his style, so it's its very organic, but it's all correct. And he, he spends hours just researching the detailed things. And also, the, the speed, if, a, let's say, a fine artist, a guy who draw Tarzan or Superman and everything, when they have to draw a hand, well, it has to look like a hand, because if not, it'll be a very bad piece of art. So uh, you, you take these guys who are very slow, well they are slow because they are drawing well. So if they have to draw a hand again, they have to per first make a sort of like a, a proportion. <laughs> I don't know how to draw a hand. It has to look like a hand, I mean proportion. Uh, it has to be a certain uh, proportion between the fingers and so it looks good. You know, so when we draw a hand, it, it's like this. You know? So it's fast because it's a humor thing. You, you can draw this and steal a hand. You know? That's, that's a, a bad way. But if you want to do it. <laughs> so it's... But when you draw in a hand, it doesn't matter because you're doing it in humor. So you're going faster, people say, oh, sure, even faster. Well, at this point, I think it's time to uh, give the audience a voice. So if you have a seat, I will get some questions for you to answer. Wer hat denn Fragen an die Herrschaften? Wie gefällt es Ihnen in Deutschland? Das ist eine sehr dezidierte Frage. How do you like it in Germany? I like it very much. It's, uh, we were trying to decide last night how many times we've both been to Germany. I think you've been here 10 times. Sergio's been here 10 times. I've been here maybe eight times. I think it's maybe my eighth time. Um, I'm trying to learn German. That's how much I like it here. Because, uh, you know, when I come here, I want to communicate with people. I want to... Uh, you know, be, be able to enjoy the country, and uh, it's beautiful. It uh, reminds me a lot of where I grew up, so it's a little bit like home. Also, Bill mag es sehr hier zu sein. Er ist mittlerweile auch so zum siebten, achten Mal da. Wir waren gestern nicht ganz hundertprozentig sicher. Er versucht auch Deutsch zu lernen, weil er gerne kommunizieren möchte. Das macht er schon einige Jahre, dass er das lernt. Mittlerweile ist es so, dass er viel von dem versteht, was wir sagen. Also vorsichtig. I'm, I'm going to make my answers as long as possible, just to just so that he can work a little bit harder. Yeah. Ich bin ja berühmt für meine kreativen Übersetzungen und ähm, der gute Sergio, der ist mindestens schon zehnmal da gewesen, dreimal davon ähm, mit uns auf Signiertour. Sergio, how, how do you like it here? Oh, I love this country. I've been coming since the uh, 60s. The first time here was in 67. And I've been coming many, many times, not only to the fair, but every time we take a trip, we go all over the country. And I love it because it has nothing to do with the country I grew up with, because I grew up in Mexico, and it doesn't look at all like Mexico. We have a completely different scenery, you know, and I love the forest. Also er liebt es hier, er war 1967 schon zum ersten Mal da und was ihm besonders gut gefällt ist, dass es hier überhaupt nicht aussieht, wie das er aufgewachsen ist, nämlich in Mexiko. So, am Tage suche. Weitere Fragen, ich gehe mal. Äh, ich bleibe noch kurz hier und dann komme ich zu dir. Kann ich 
Magic Snacks nung Hub. <lacht> ich denke, die werden wir irgendwo hingeben, um sie für einen guten Zweck nach Hause zu geben. Ich meine, der beste Zweck für dich wäre natürlich, wenn du sie kriegst, aber wir werden uns einen anderen guten Zweck nach He was asking for the drawings and I said, we give it to, um, to auction or something like that for... Uh, okay, so. Idee für was? Um, what was the, where, where did the basic idea for, for The Simpsons come from? Uh, Matt Groening, who's the creator of The Simpsons and, and uh, our boss and friend, <laughs> uh, he came up with the idea based on his family. And re really, The Simpsons are nothing like his family. But he want, wanted to create uh, a family of characters that he could use as, uh, you know, to, to satirize our culture. And uh, he named them all after members of his own family. But uh, the, the idea basically came from, uh, I'll try to tell this in as quick a way as possible. Uh, Matt Graney has a comic strip called Life in Hell, which he was going to sell to Fox as an animated show, but when he found out they would own it, he switched and he came up with The Simpsons in about 15 minutes. And he, he just created this group of characters based on his family, and then he changed them. But uh, the, the origin was based on his family. Also vielleicht ganz kurz, ähm, Matt Groening, der Erfinder, der hatte, ähm, mal ein, hatte noch ähm, dieses Life in Hell Cartoon und er wollte das an Fox verkaufen, um eine, äh, eine Zeichentrickserie draus zu machen, hat dann erfahren, dass die aber dann alle Rechte daran hätten. Und das wollte er nicht, deswegen hat er innerhalb von 15 Minuten die Simpsons entworfen, auf, basierend auf seiner Familie, hat es dann hinterher noch ein bisschen geändert, aber das war so ähm, eigentlich der Beginn von dem Ganzen. Hello, I'll do it in English because I'm not German. Uh, is there any particular Simpsons character that, is, that you really hate to draw because it's so difficult? I think hate is maybe too strong a word, but um, there are some characters that give me more problems than others. Uh, probably Lisa, because it's very difficult to get the shape of her hair correct. Uh, so that would be the one that I have the most difficulty with. Also die Frage war, ob er einen Charakter überhaupt nicht leiden kann, weil er so schwierig zu zeichnen ist. Hassen ist zu stark als Wort, aber Lisa ist sehr, sehr, sehr schwierig wegen den Haaren. Well, I, I think Skinner is harder. S Skinner, yeah, the shape of his hair. Yeah, it's more organic. So it's, that's the hardest one. It was, no, but you cannot make it in any other angle. Yeah. Did you create your own character that also appeared in the series? Did you create your own characters that also appeared in the series? Oh, um, not really. Uh, the way that I draw Radioactive Man has has made it into the series uh, because Radioactive Man existed on the TV show. Uh, from the beginning, from the first season. Um, but then when we made the comic book, he sort of evolved more. So I started to notice that when the animators draw Radioactive Man, they draw it the way I draw it. But uh, I haven't actually created any characters for the comics that have appeared on the TV show. But it is almost impossible, because it started as a family, but it grew up as a city. And every time they needed a character, they make it like it really belonged. The bar owner, the principals of the schools, the everything, the comic book shop guy, the, the, the mayor. So they have created for 22 years a series of characters that absolutely belong to the town. They are perfectly fit. So it's impossible to create a new character because whatever you need, the character exists already. Yeah. In fact, one of, one of Matt Groening's, uh, uh, not rules, but one of the advice that he's given us in creating the comics is only create a new character for a story if it's absolutely necessary. 
because there are so many characters on the TV show that nine times out of ten, you're going to find the character you need for a situation. Was hat jeder verstanden? Deine Frage? Ist es nochmal geplant, dass der Sergio Ragones als Gastrolle auftritt bei den Sims jetzt in Zukunft? When you have a guest appearance at the Simpsons, as you, as Sergio. Oh yes. I, I draw myself every time I can. For everything, and I always put myself there. But I, was, I had a guest appearance in Futurama. I was a, a head. And, and uh, it was explained to yeah, has anyone Has anyone seen this episode? Is, I think it, it hasn't aired here. Not in air here yet. It's an episode of Futurama that takes place at Comic Con in San Diego in the year 3010. And Sergio is the only existing cartoonist. So the whole Comic Con is all nothing but movies and video games and there's one small little area for comics and Sergio's the last surviving cartoonist he's just a head in a jar and I did my young voice so that was a great thing also dies vielleicht in Kürze war sehr interessant dass für die das nicht richtig verstanden haben ähm, die Frage war ob Sergio auch irgendwann einen Gastauftritt bei den Simpsons hat er sagt er zeichnet sich sowieso immer rein wo immer das geht ähm, ja. Ich weiß zudem noch, dass es gab dieses Jahr ein Convention Special, da hat er eben auch eine, eine nicht unwesentliche Rolle, da wird nämlich sein berühmter Schnurrbart gesucht und er hat eine Gastrolle in der Futurama Zeichentrickserie, wo er als Kopf auftritt bei der Comic Con, als einer der letzten Cartoonisten, die es überhaupt noch gibt im Jahr 3000. So, ähm, äh, 3000, eine Null zu viel, also 30, und schnell, auch weiter in der Zukunft. So, ähm, ein, zwei Fragen schaffen wir noch. Äh, wenn uns niemand so interessiert, dann gehen wir wieder hier rüber. Ähm, unterschreibt ihr auch auf T-Shirts? Ja. Äh, die Regeln für die Signierstunde erkläre ich gleich noch. This is for real. I'm just wondering how you first got started drawing Simpsons. How did you start first? I was working at a studio drawing Disney characters and uh, a friend of mine who was an art director uh, was working with Matt Crane that the Simpsons TV show had just started and they needed people to do artwork for t-shirts and games and merchandise. So they uh, hired me to, to uh, do basically all the artwork, me and, me and maybe two other people. Uh, we created all the artwork for all the merchandise in the early part of the, the TV show. So, noch eine letzte Frage. Du willst, dann sollst du auch dürfen. Uh, that's not a question, that's uh, just that my wife is drawing you, so you just have a guest draw, and if you want it, you can get it after the show. Dankeschön. She's too shy to say it herself. Well, oh, over there. Oh, okay. The last question. Deutsch. I would so gerne wissen, wer sich die Geschenken ausdenkt. Is das eine Gemeinschaftssache? Machen das die Zeichner? Machen das alle? So the question is, um, who is coming up with this story? Is, uh, is there a pool of creatives doing that, or doing it the, the, the artists by themselves? Who is doing the stories? Well, with uh, Sergio, he does his own stories. Uh, so it's, it's different with different uh, creative people. Some, we have a lot of writers who are only writers, and then we have artists who are only artists, and then we have some who do both. So it depends. Also, uh, es kommt ein bisschen drauf an, es gibt einige Zeichen, die die Geschichten selber machen können. Ähm, einige sind wirklich dann von speziellen Autoren geschrieben. Ähm, was jetzt nicht der Fall ist, ist, dass es da so einen Autorenpool gibt, der zusammenarbeitet. So, ähm, das war es mal mit den Fragen. Wir kommen jetzt demnächst zur Signierstunde. Dafür möchte ich ein paar Regeln aufstellen. Zum einen möchte ich euch noch zeigen, dass es ähm, hier auch Dinge zu kaufen gibt, 
die äh, sagen wir mal, einen gewissen Seltenheitswert haben. Das sind nämlich die Variant Cover der aktuellen Hefte. Zum einen äh, von Bart Simpsons Horror Show. Da haben wir das Variant Cover von Bill, das es hier mit etwas Glück geben sollte. Und auf der anderen Seite haben wir hier das Variant, oh, das Variant Cover von äh, Sergio für die aktuelle Simpsons Nummer. Das wird es hier geben. Außerdem äh, hat Sergio aktuell unsere Nummer, die Bart Simpsons Jubelnummer Nummer 50 gemacht. Das ist auch von Sergio. Und äh, weil wir ja hier so froh sind, dass er nach vielen Jahren wieder da ist, gibt es außerdem, das weiß bei Bongo sowieso niemand, deswegen zeigen wir es hier, ein Simpsons Special Cover für das Mad Magazin, das aktuelle auch von Sergio gemacht. You know, that's the future of Lisa. Okay, kommen wir also zu den Regeln. Diese ganzen Sachen gibt es hier zu kaufen, auch jetzt direkt bei der Signierstunde. Ähm, weil ich weiß, dass ein ziemlich großer Andrang ist, werden wir gleich ähm, Nummern vergeben. Insgesamt äh, sind es zweimal 50 Nummern. Ihr könnt euch bei beiden Künstlern anstellen. Das ist nur ein Richtwert, weil wir nur eine nur eine bestimmte Zeit haben für die Signierstunde. Das heißt, wer diese, eine dieser Nummern abkriegt der, und sich dann anstellt, der kriegt garantiert seine Signatur. Ähm, wer sich trotzdem anstellen mag, hat eine gute Chance, weil die beiden sehr schnell sind. Nur wir müssen irgendwann Schluss machen. Ja, das ist einfach der Punkt. Und ich weiß, dann sind immer lange Gesichter da. Wer also dann eine Nummer hat und noch nicht dran war, äh, da werden wir dafür sorgen, dass er seine Signatur dann trotzdem bekommt beim Panini-Stand. Für alle anderen gilt es ein bisschen Glück zu haben. Es gibt aber in jedem Fall auch noch eine zweite Möglichkeit, nämlich heute Nachmittag ab ca. 16 Uhr wird auch eine weitere Signierstunde am Panini-Stand stattfinden. Also kein Drama, wenn ihr hier jetzt nicht die Glücklichen sein solltet. Und jetzt die wichtigste Frage, weil... Äh, Kriege ich was gezeichnet? Ähm, nein. Also wir können auf keinen Fall jedem eine Zeichnung geben, das geht einfach nicht. Es darf außerdem nicht auf weißem Papier gemacht werden. Diese Regel die gibt es schon etwas länger. Was also gemacht wird, sind auf ein gekauftes Produkt ein Headsketch drauf. Headsketch. Das geht am schnellsten auf ein gekauftes Produkt. Ansonsten der Rest Signaturen. Im höchsten Falle fünf, sonst kommen wir nicht durch. It's Five signatures for each in the in the row during the signing, and one head sketch of on a, on the cover or inside a book of a board item. Well, no. Okay. Um, ich möchte euch bitten, die beiden nicht zu bedrängen und höflich zu sein. Sie sind es auch. Und genauso möchte ich euch bitten, mich jetzt nicht zu bedrängen, wenn ich die ersten 50 Nummern ausgebe. Um, wir haben das ein bisschen aufgeteilt, damit ich nicht der Einzige bin. Du hast die anderen. Dann geh du doch mal in den hinteren Bereich und ich bin hier in den vorderen Bereich tätig. So, einmal. Der an mich randrängt, der wird, der wird generell übersehen. Hast du dich disqualifiziert? Du kriegst keine Nummer, das ist ganz klar. So. Auch hier sind diese Das 
natürlich. Da ist keine Absicht mit verbunden. So, mal schauen wir mal. Hallo, habe ich irgendwas gesagt von mich bedrängen? Nein, habe ich nicht. Ich kann natürlich auch aufhören, Nummern zu vergeben. Das ist überhaupt kein Problem für mich. Ihr seid ja schließlich die, die die Zeichnung wollen. Wenn übrigens einer zwei Nummern hat, dann äh, gibt er trotzdem nur eine Zeichnung, das ist ganz klar. So. Hallo, nicht dränge. Wir wollen nicht, dass hier der Notarzt ausrücken muss. Das wäre mir. So, wir unterbrechen hier mal kurz. Alle gehen einen Schritt zurück. Na also, ja, geht ja einigermaßen. So. Wer eine Nummer hat, bitte weggehen. Ich wiederhole, wer zwei Nummern hat, hat auch Pech gehabt. Also es reicht, es ist kein Problem, eine Nummer einzureichen und zwei Nummern gibt es Probleme. Okay. So, und Schluss. So, Bill, don't stop here, you know.